You have read this, I think, in grad school. Yes, you did it. Okay, there is institutionalized discrimination. This is what Dr. Stogel called the structural violence. It's the condition under which we live. Okay, it's right there. And secondly, uh, people who are minorities need family and friend support. And it's, this is a quote, whites are generally less aware of racism and white privilege. Okay, it's hard to explain, like, uh, I'll give some examples later. And then, therefore, everyone needs to have cultural competence. I think this conference is a good way by which you can have a communication. Okay, and nobody's born racist. It's what you learn, okay, later on. This is an example of institutionalized discrimination. What's DWB? Oh, wow. Yeah, see, we black and brown people know what is this. It's, it's real. What does driving what black or brown mean? <laughs> yeah, by the mere fact, aha, this guy or girl, or a woman or man, is brown or black, okay. And I've been victimized many times and I was told be polite to the police, even if you have done no wrong. Okay, okay, I exaggerated, not many times, maybe <laughs> once. <laughs> and one time Derek saw me, but you know, Derek left. He was about to say me. Okay, like, I, I really just kept myself mom. I was told, cool, calm, and shut up. Okay, I said, yes, sir. Okay. I knew I didn't do anything wrong. Okay? So, racial profiling is a daily basis. And then Dr. Juanita Johnson Bailey said, when a white professor, male professor, and a, a female African American professor talk about diversity, the female African American professor is labeled as racist, uh, biased, prejudiced. Why does she always talk about inequality, uh, 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 discrimination, and white privilege? But when a a white male Italian American professor said, you know, in society there's discrimination and there's racial profiling and there's white privilege. Students say, oh, oh wow, he is so good. The professor is so open minded. This is a study done by Juanita Johnson. Very like white double standards. Students have built in to think if a white person talks about diversity, he is cool. But when an African-American female professor talks about diversity, no, a racist, bad professor. See, same subject matter, and th this was an experiment that they did, a uh, co-teacher. And consequently, for evaluation, I think uh, in, even in our program, uh, both Lisa and Dr. Janice have been part of our programs, may always get better evaluation. No, oh, okay, I exaggerate too much oftentimes get better exaggeration. And I would attend this session like, there's nothing special. Oh, and then I said, oops, I read Juanita's article, yeah, because it's male. There's built-in bias already, even among students without talking about it. Believe it or not, the Statue of Liberty was meant to be African-American. There are records to show this, but the US said, no, French, we send it back to you, give us a proper white female uh, Statue of Liberty. I learned this from an African-American colleague when I was doing my doctoral studies. Minorities go through different hard times. And even if you watch Disney cartoon with your uh, little siblings or kids, you think they're so uh, uh, antiseptic, there's nothing wrong with them you better watch out because the good guys have good, proper accent and the bad guys have rough English accent and are darker. Cartoon, can you imagine? Even cartoon puts color and thick accent to the bad guys. So what do kids learn? Discriminate, you know, through cartoons. You know the story, Mark Anthony sang, and they said, oh, we want a proper American. We want a US. Why are we selling this to Mexico? Firstly, he's not Mexican. Secondly, he's American. Yeah. Third, he's, he's Puerto Rican American. Shut up. 
and there are many racist people out there. We know this because you can throw things in Tumblr, Instagram, Snapchat. Uh, they go viral. And sometimes people take it, and they do. There's hall of shame, okay, on, on some websites. They, they put the snapshot on what people post. There are a lot of hate. Uh, like, even if, for example, he's Mexican American, so what? He's American. So what? And you know, they did tests on African American civilians. Can you imagine infecting people? This is historical. You can watch the YouTube link. And all kinds of, that's why you know, I learned this from the Center for Black Studies. Some of you work there, okay? All right, there are all kinds of people uh, who are black. That's why the term black cover everything. And this is about the Trayvon Martin case and the Standard Brown laws uh, and the new Jim Crow, which means, you know, many things you know, so you have to buy this book if you have not bought it already. Which says something like the zero tolerance. We talked about it this morning. Uh, Stogel said that uh, when in school children misbehave, and children do, the teacher somehow will zero in on an African American boy, even if all other boys misbehave. And they say, Come here, you misbehave out of the school you go. Huh? Many cases like this. This is not hypothetical. Lisa and I know and see that we, we work on these historical cases in the cat. And kicked out, like, wait a minute, what just happened? And if you do that, they get out of school and you tell the parents to try to uh, reason with school or, or bring you to school, empower you to talk to the school. No, and then they stay home and then it's called the school to prison pipeline. They're just condemning you to fail. Okay, there's so much built in. This is the structural violence we were talking about. And then a man was arrested for having a stroke while black, left to die on the jail floor. Can you imagine? Again, you can check this again on the website. And you know, uh, Trevor Martin, Skittle, and Ice Tea, they say, you know, armed and dangerous. Okay. And the memes here that show you the different uh, features and the bias that was And then they say, what if they change colors? What would have been the issue? Right, big question, huh? Okay. Huh? He, you know, he was wearing khaki. That's, you know, the stereotype of who wears khaki. You don't know? Anyway, okay. He was not like the hoodie hoodie that you were stereotyping to be. This is actually what you look like. And then, okay. Now, the good thing is, uh, you know, this Cheerio, you've seen this commercial. The parents, are, we have no time to show the video. Uh, mix uh, colors, different colors. And the kids loved it. They had an experiment showing this to kids. Wow, this is wonderful. The dad is this, the mom told him. But adults on YouTube, they wrote hate things like, why is the father African American? Well, why is that in Cheers commercial and the mom is a European American? But the kids look at it and say, there's no problem with this. And you can watch this on YouTube too. And the kids' reactions were uh, positive. Okay. Now, we went from human power privilege to people of, you know, all kinds of features the white privilege, the white female uh, power and privilege, and then white female, male, straight, and LGBTQ power and privilege too. Okay, there, there are many circles of who have power. So, number one, whiteness huh, has some power, but don't white women and men have power? Okay? Uh, then we look at the male, specifically, uh, different colors too, would have biases with a if you're a man, therefore you do stand. Okay? If you're a woman, uh, that's not meant for you. It's the man who's brainy. And they show the woman like this in, car in uh, commercials, in you know, children's books, that uh, girls don't like math. But then there are women and men who do math and stand. Okay? So this post, uh, her post would say, I cannot believe I still have to do test this shit. And we try. It's like, how far have we gone? And I didn't come from your river, came from my VJJ. 
And worse, again, there are two women who competed for the Wimbledon, and they said, why did the dark haired woman who's small and uh, when? Why not the blonde thin skinny woman? Remember we talked about this? There's a built-in bias. You cannot accept that a person who's not skinny or tall will be like that. Okay, so come on. So women decide the women's uh, reproductive health. And women are criticized for their makeup, but not the male newscasters. And Gabby Douglas was so beautiful, but what hate mail got out? Her hair was not beautiful. Like, excuse me, she didn't go for a hairdo competition. She went for the Olympics. And her hair was nothing wrong with it. But so much hate. And women are considered just part of somebody else's life. She's the sister or she's mother of daughter of wife of. Why don't you just say she is she? Period. Okay? Remember Rihanna? She got beaten up. And we still listen to Chris Brown. I'm guilty too. Okay? Uh, and then we have stereotype of Muslims are all wearing veils. This is Queen of Jordan. More. Okay. And class differs. Maybe this is one most important. We forget class. It's always the rich and the famous who can finally decide our destiny. Fast food, it's the uh, feminization of women, of poverty, I mean, yes. Okay, inequality is real, according to Robert Wright. Uh, it's a, a Bill Morris uh, pro. It's personal, it's expensive, and it was created. 1% of Americans are taking home nearly 20% of the country's total income on you know, nearly 35% of the country's wealth. This didn't happen by accident. We allowed it to happen. So it's the 1% versus 99%, mm -hmm. right? We have about three minutes left. Okay, and fast food, this was the latest news as of yesterday. Uh, big companies earn billions, but because of the low wages, the government has to eat up uh, seven billions of welfare. So this is corporate welfare. Can you imagine it? Corporations are being given money. And then, uh, uh, at the expense of people working their classes. That's why people want to organize. Don't forget, if you are rich, whatever you are, you're still powerful. You can be a woman, man, LGBT, QIA, queer, intersex, and asexual. People of color, as long as you have uh, money, you still have power. Okay, don't forget it. And people in the rich country, it's still people have power. Christians have power over non-Christians in the U.S. Uh, and discrimination against atheists, this is a big issue. Uh, Opera recently interviewed somebody. And when people do interfaith work, I'm part of it. There are no non-Christians in the interfaith network. I kept on saying that we kept on calling ourselves interfaith network for peace and justice. Show me a Muslim, show me a Buddhist, show me no, people not of the Abrahamic religion. I kept on saying that. No, no, but we have a Methodist. Yeah, that's Christian. But we have congregation. Yeah, that's Christian. We have camp. Yeah, that's Christian. Not getting out of the Christian mode. And Muslims are also for women's rights and against domestic violence. Straits of power. And we have two minutes left. And I'm just saying there are, in fact, uh, five sexes. We think there are only two. This is based on scientific study. I have quoted Anne Fausto Sterling. She had written two articles. The traditional male, traditional female, the intersex term 